Hi, thank you for joining us for our alumni webinar series. I'm Kevin Gash, Senior Lecturer in Film and TV Production in the School of Arts, which is part of our media production suite of Film and TV Production, Media Production and Journalism courses. I've been asked to host this webinar as part of the York St. John University alumni series, Alumni Journeys, Creativity, Careers and Community. Before I introduce today's speaker, there are a few housekeeping matters. Uh, we'll be hosting a question and answer session at the end of this talk. The questions have been prepared in advance, but if you have any questions you would like to ask to the speaker, please email alumni at yorksj.ac.uk and the team will pass on your questions. Uh, I should also say there's also an auto transcript appearing during the talk for increased accessibility. However, please be aware it may not translate perfectly and you may see the odd oddity in um, word translations. Thank you very much. Um, so with no further ado, I would like to introduce you to Mr. Oliver Pulin, uh, commonly known as Ozzy Pulin. Um, Ozzy Pulin is a film director specializing in music videos, commercials and fashion. Uh, Ozzy graduated from York St. John University in 2011 with a degree in film and television production. Ozzy has directed music videos for artists such as Lewis Capaldi, John Newman and Wolf Alice. And Ozzy has also directed commercials for English Heritage, River Island and Stella McCartney, amongst many others. Uh, in 2022, Ozzy directed the short film Once You See Red, which was a short documentary that explores his brother's mental health after serving in the war in Afghanistan. Um, I would now like to pass you over to Ozzy and I look forward to chatting with him afterwards. Thank you very much, Kev. That was a really lovely introduction. I uh, appreciate that. Um, so nice to hear, I don't know, someone else say your own biography or your own bio. Um, it's always a very strange uh, thing. Um, but thanks so much for having me on here. I'm really uh, excited to be on. And, you know, I always used to love all the talks that went on um, in York St. John when I was there. Um, so it's just, it's just great to, um, you know, give back in a way. Um, I guess my link to York St. John is I'm, I'm from uh, a small town called Pontefract, um, which is close to, close to York. Um, I didn't really, I couldn't really find the right course that I wanted to do when I was leaving college. I kind of knew I liked picking up a camera. I, I was a, a, an avid skateboarder and still am. Um, so I used to make skateboard films with a lot of my friends found I could, I didn't know where to like push my energy I knew I liked to make um kind of everything I like to be in control of the camera and the edit and the people I was filming and you know I just didn't know kind of what the best course was and when I found Yorks and John it was kind of it kind of encapsulated everything I kind of wanted to figure out rather than going like I guess down the kind of film school route um, which I always felt was a li little bit uh, daunting. And at the time, you know, th they're a super expensive thing. And I think it's a, um, it's a luxury um, kind of thing to do. And I, I kind of wanted a real university experience. Um, so York St. John kind of felt, felt right for that. And um, yeah, when I got there, what I kind of loved about it was the sense that you could learn every every little aspect about it. I, I had no, you know, no idea. I just worked on my own. And I kind of liked the idea that you learn about the script writing process. I've never even read a script in my life. You know, working with other people and collaborating, I think was the main thing that kind of pushed it from me. And um, learning how to edit and learning the, the, the behind like what tricks you do with the camera and what you what you put in front of the camera and acting and you know all these kind of things it was funny in the first in the first year again I still didn't really know what I wanted to do so I used to put myself in front of the camera the whole time but maybe it was like a fearful thing of not you know being confident 
in uh, behind it a little bit and I never I, I was never too shy to kind of get in front of it because I, I always thought I w wanted to be a, an actor at first which is quite laughable nowadays um but once I kind of found my feet there I found I find, found my people and I could felt like I could express myself a little bit more I found a really great community of people that um you know we all shared a great enthusiasm for for making work really and whether it be good or bad we'd always have a really good time with it um um which kind of then pushed me into really thinking you know i want to i think i want to pursue directing a little bit more you know but, but it was one of them things where it's like in the back of your mind where you're like oh but that's like so beyond anything you know i didn't even you know i, I thought oh maybe i'd be an editor or a camera operator or a DOP or something I didn't really think you know for, for the for the great great beyond um but you know it was me expressing my 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 love for it and I was really lucky in the sense that well my, my mum's a florist and one day someone came in to buy some flowers and this person um was a makeup artist on Emmerdale which is really close to um, to where I'm from. In fact, it's based in Leeds. And uh, my mom, being a being a mom, was being very enthusiastic and said, like, "Oh, my son's at York St John and doing this and wants to be in this, but he doesn't know how to get his foot in the door and all this kind of stuff." And she was like, "Okay, well, I I'll meet him. Let's let's meet up with him." And you know, I met up with this makeup artist um, who just bought flowers for my mom and. Uh, yeah, I had an interview with her and I remember like going in a shirt and really, really smart. And um, uh, basically she was like, okay, I'll give you a shot. You know, we do these uh, trial days. So I did a trial day at ITV on Emmerdale as a, as you know, as, a, as an intern, as a runner, basically doing everything I possibly could to impress or, well, not even impress, just, like, I just, just really trying to, um, do as much as I could really to um, make an impact and show people that I was really enthusiastic about it. So I was doing that. I, I, I was really lucky enough to kind of do that in my final year um, on the side um, as a freelancer for ITV. Uh, it was helpful. I, you know, I, I, I passed my driving test so I could drive. Um, I shared my car with my mom. So every time I uh, had a job of ITV, I, you know, borrow my mom's car and um and work there um but then from from that you know I learned so much from that I mean I mean the main thing I learned I'd say is etiquette and like knowing how to be on set and being surrounded by these people but I kind of always knew that that ITV in the television world wasn't wasn't something I wanted to fully pursue um so again being very vocal about about, about that um I from chatting to someone at a house party literally the final year uh a third year I um chatted to this this girl who was a friend of an, another friend at university and she was the office manager of um a production company called Partizan and Partizan's a production company based in London they primarily make um, TV commercials and music videos and fashion films, all that kind of stuff. And, you know, I, that world was so foreign to me. I'd never even, I never knew that beyond television and kind of film that there was this other arena of music videos and commercials where you can make a living. Um, so she was like, you know, I can get you some, get you two weeks work experience in London uh, working with this company. And I was like, yeah, <laughs> I'm, gonna, I'm so down for doing that. You know, and I had to, I had to tell ITV, I'm like, that I, I, was, I was going to do this and I'm not sure if I was be back and all this kind of thing. Ended up going down to London. Um, I'd only been to London maybe a handful of times when, when my parents, it wasn't really, it was, you know, again, very new to me. Um, and I went and had two weeks work experience and from them two weeks, two of the full-time runners in the production room had left. They, they were leaving. So there was two spaces um, uh, 
two spaces um, available at the production company and they uh, after two weeks kindly offered if I wanted to do that to, to be a runner and I just jump, jumped at the chance and I mean, I mean it was terrible pay but you know it was almost like going back to university again we had a we had a room full of runners I think we had like four full-time runners and running you know most people know it's it's, it's literally doing and everything from making people tea to carrying equipment when you're on set to photocopying things to walking the MD's dog the managing director's dog which I did a lot um but what I made sure of what, what I was doing there is like making sure that everyone knew that I was enthusiastic and I really loved being there um so yeah after after I was there for uh I think I was running for like a year so I'd, I'd, mo I'd moved to London on my own I knew one person um at the time from college um I like slept on his floor until I could find a place to live and then um yeah after basically yeah running for a year I would push to assist directors who were signed there who who because they, they they have a roster of directors who, who are represented to them so they're like exclusive and can only work for that production company so I would make sure that I would try and help them in any way I could and make sure they knew I wanted to help so I'd get to go on set a lot more and be by their side and learn how they how they shoot how they how they go from a concept to production and then production to edit and everything you know from from even going you know asking if I can be sitting into a grading suite and see how these 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 rushes that they got were, were graded and color grading and things you know I really really try to be a sponge and absorb all these things I could um to the point where I was continuing in the background making my own kind of work um I just bought myself that she saved up and bought a, like a Canon 550D, um, which at the time, you know, was was like, oh my God, this DSLRs are revolutionary. Um, so I was shooting everything on there and, and I, I, just, I just made a, a point to the production company that I wanted to do all the behind the scenes. Um, and I was like, you don't have to pay me more. Like, I, this is just what I want to do. And from there, I, I started, started doing that a lot more and assisting the directors and from assistant to the directors, they would they would then, if they got jobs that they couldn't do or was like, I don't know, didn't pay them enough or whatever, they would ask if I wanted to do it. So I would I would always say, yeah, 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 like course, yeah, I'll do it, whatever, whatever you want me to do. <laughs> I would, you know, very, very keen um, just to make things, I think, just to really try and make as much stuff as I possibly could from um, even filming like nightclub in nightclubs and things like that, which was like a big thing at the time. And um, even a lot of the uh, directors were photographers. And that was at the time when they wanted more video content from the photography st still. So what I did would make my own films from the still, from the still shoot. And they were kind of like my fashion films in a way, which kind of helped me then go on to make more things. Um, but it wasn't until um, I was really pushing to wanting to make music videos and I met a band um, really, really by accident um, called Wolf Alice. And at the time, I think they hadn't done an album. You know, no one really knew who they were. Um, and I did two, two videos for them that I shot myself again on the, on the, on the DSLR. And... Um, from there, I don't know, from the creative freedom of that and building that relationship, they kind of got big, well, bigger. And then they came back to me and was like, we have a £10,000 budget. Um, do you want to make this video for us? We've just been signed to this, this record label. And I was like, at the time, I was like, this is so much money. What, what, do, I do? what do I do with it? Like, I need a crew. I, I don't, you know, I've just been doing everything as this one-man band which is great, but when it gets to that certain level and you want to, you know, step up, it was a real, it was quite daunting. So I asked the production company who I was running for if they would help me. Um, and they really kindly did and surrounded me with a really amazing crew. And we ended up doing this music video. And then 
Wolf Alice end up, ended up winning the Mercury, Mercury Prize, M Music Prize. The video started doing really well. And then people started reaching out from other record labels to me um, because of this one video. And then from that, I basically was like, I am done. I don't want to make tea anymore. Like it was really, it was, re it was really frustrating because it was like, I wanted to be this create, uh, like make, make work, but at the same time, you know, I, I needed to like, you know, run on set and stuff to, to, to earn a living. And, but I was like, I, I just needed to focus more on that. So I, I told partisan that I was going to leave and pursue this, but they really kindly just said, look, you do your thing. We'll still pay you as a runner, but you don't have to do that anymore. We'll build, we'll, we'll build you up as a director. So from then they began to give me scripts and music videos and started building me in as a director. Um, so it was weird going from like the runner's room, you know, with all my friends. And then, you know, two floors up is like where the directors sit, you know, and we've got this big, they have this big wall of amazing photography books and you have researchers there and I don't know. It was, it was, it was, it was really, really surreal. So, so for the, for, for the next few years, then I just, they just started building me up and I started continuing to make more work. Um, but then it was only, I think it was two years ago. I left, left partisan, um, just because after the pandemic, it slowed down, the work was slowing down. I was bringing in more work, I think, than they were getting me. And, I, I, there was this kind of, I still felt that uh, they saw me as a runner uh, and I needed to, I needed to leave and, and feel that. Also, I felt like I was getting a little bit lazy, like relying on them to get me work, which is, is never good. Just always make sure you're getting your own work and constantly pursuing to get your own work. Um, so, so, um, so yeah, I left and uh, yeah, it's been, it's felt like I've had a, a rocket up my ass and I am now um, finding my own work and my own way in, in, in the world and trying to find my, uh, my voice even, even further. And, um, and yeah, and now, um, yeah, I feel like I'm really pushing my voice and I feel like I've had a, like an injection of, of, of life again with, with making things and, for the first time, I've actually self-funded my own my own uh, short film about my brother, um, and it's it's you know doing really doing really well. It, it, we released it on uh, on at the end of last year and had a really an amazing screening, and it's doing the rounds in the festivals and and yeah, I am now more hungry <laughs> to make my own personal work, which I think I forgot about really. Um, from being caught up in commercials and music videos and all that stuff, you kind of forget that you've got to, you've got to take a step back and, and make your own work. Um, so yeah, th that's pretty much in a nutshell, uh, my kind of story start to finish, um, which I hope makes sense. And if I've missed anything, which I probably have an important details, like we can, we can talk further, um, as we go on to the, the more questions type of things, but I hope, I hope it's a, a helpful uh, story. <laughs> what do you reckon, Kev? Hi, right, I'll come back in. <laughs> fascinating, fascinating oversight of your, um, I guess, journey. Uh, yeah. Prior to York St. John, across York St. John, and then afterwards. Um, yeah, yeah. So yeah, really interesting. And I, I mean, you've always been a really amiable and enthusiastic soul and a lot of the things that you touched on there I guess um, flag those up as really important facets within the industry it's not just about um, you know being capable technically or creatively it's about your kind of um, application etiquette and attitude really big time I think it's infectious I think if you're going into any project or anything whatever you're doing, if you're going into it with enthusiasm, people will recognize it and it's people will be drawn to it and, and want to give you more things to do and give you more responsibilities. And that's what I kind of found. Even if it was like, you know, the first day I was going to the production company, I went around my little notepad, writing down cups of tea for everyone. And I even remember someone saying like, 
oh, I'll, I'll, uh, I'll take a red bush tea, please. And I, in my head, I'm like, what the hell is a red bush tea? <laughs> you know what I mean? I was like so clueless. And then, you know, writing it down, like really though, like yeah, yeah, red bush tea. Yeah. And then someone saying, oh, like, you know, can you make me just like a cafeteria coffee? I'd never done that. <laughs> you know, my, my sheltered life. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, I, but it was like, but it was the level of like enthusiasm I put into it. I think that people recognized and then people end up slowly giving you more and more responsibilities to do things until it just builds up and builds up. And then you end up, you know, I don't know, you end up then directing something. I don't know. That's it's, it's kind of it's kind of it. If you go into it in a, with a like, I know it all attitude, people are going to sniff it out straight away and be like, well, even if you do know it all, like it gives a shit. Like, make me my cup. Like, get me a cup of tea. I don't know. Do you know what I mean? Like, it's all about learning and absorbing, like being a sponge, basically. Yeah. Because you know, we can all we can all watch all the amazing movies and read all the great books or whatever. But no one can kind of teach you to be in a room full of people and and talk. You know. Absolutely. So red bush teas weren't high on the agenda when growing up in Pontefract. They were not, mate. It was just like, I mean, I just thought there was one general tea. <laughs> I don't even think I'd heard of green tea. <laughs> so before I move on to some of the questions that have come through, in terms of what you were touching on there and the notion of kind of giving off a good impression, I suppose, if we were going to narrow it down to one yeah. singular word, do you still find that that's really important now that I guess you're perhaps more prominently freelance if that's fair to kind of yeah. summarize with yeah, the kind of move away from partisan and 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 daring to kind of do your own thing yeah i think it you know when i when i was when i was part of this big machine partisan um i think i got a little bit lazy and i was like oh they're gonna go out and get me work and i kind of i think my level of enthusiasm did dip but now that i've like i've kind of broke away and become more independent um I felt this enthusiasm come back and I, you know, it's more and more times you're, you're, you know, I have to, I have to pitch to win jobs. So I literally have to do this in front of, in front of, you know, how many people for agencies and you've got to show them that you, that, you know, even if it's like a mayonnaise commercial, you be like, I'm going to show you that this mayonnaise is going to look so tasty. You know, it's like you've got to you've got to show them. you've got to make them feel good about what they're making. Because at the end of the day, you're just making we're, we're making things, you know, for people to buy most of the time in the commercial world. So it's if, if you can go it, go into it with a high level of enthusiasm, it's going to be infectious for everyone else. And I think. If I still didn't have that, I, I, I honestly don't think I'd win as many jobs. I think they would look at the work, but I think it, I think it's 50-50. I think they've got to think, can I work with this person? Absolutely. Okay, so I'll move on to some of the questions that have come through. First few questions are, um, I suppose, essentially from a kind of alumni perspective. Um, yeah. so first one. What is the single best piece of advice you've been given by somebody? during your career journey oh okay i i think this is more of a given now i feel like when i first started it, it really wasn't and but it was mainly just like don't be a dickhead <laughs> i know that's like you know it's mainly, but just don't just don't just just don't be you don't be rude it's such it's 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 such a when you get really into it it's such a small and it's such a it can be such a small industry and you know, hearsay can go around and you don't know who's going to be where, where they are or what they're going to do. Um, you know, in the end, it's a very collaborative thing. So you've got to really respect everyone. Um, you know, you might be the most amazing, you know, filmmaker in the world, but like you, you got to, you, you can't, you, you got to be a nice person in a way, you know, it's, it's all about, you know, you've got to be enthusiastic and push through your vision or whatever. But I just think, you know, when someone said to me, just don't be a dick and you'll be fine. <laughs> okay. Okay. I'll really try. Um, but, it, it, but I think that was the best thing someone kind of. I suppose invariably your reputation precedes you, doesn't it? So. It really does. Yeah. You know, if, so, if someone, you know, if someone, if you were rude to any someone, it can, they, people can hold it into you. And especially like when I was running, you know, the people who I was running with, um, you know, making tea and everything, 
you know, they've gone on to do really great things from, from partisan and they're all my friends and I call them up all the time for advice. And I think if we didn't have that friendship or we were all, because we're all nice to each other, we'd, it, I wouldn't have that now. And like, I don't think I'd even be where I am now if it wasn't for this, this community um, we kind of have surrounded myself with. It's kind of ripple effect, isn't it, that can go each way because invariably, particularly when you're starting out, people are going to kind of ask questions, what are they like? And Big if time. it's a positive response, then it's certainly going to bode much better than any yeah, kind of negative I mean, impressions that might Yeah, been. I mean, I literally just got a, before this call, I got a call about a reference of a former, um, for a former uh, uh, York St. John alumni as well, a guy called Jack Abbott. Right, yes. Yeah, so and, he, and he's an editor and, and someone called me up for a reference and like, you know, if we didn't, if 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 if, if I thought he was a dickhead, <laughs> I'd be like, oh, you know. But you know, <laughs> I, is I I think he's amazing. So it was it was, you know, I, I just wouldn't have been able to do that. You're giving back a bit, aren't you? For exactly, the- <laughs> yeah, yeah. You're you're just like, you know, helping each other out. So next question, um, specific to your time at York St John, if you can um, sort of stretch mm. your memory back. Uh, what was the most relevant module um, or course element that you did at York St. John University that helped you develop your skills? One thing I really remember, I can't remember if it was, I think it must have been the first year. And I remember we all got given um, a script, the same script, and then we got split up into different groups different like production groups really. So we had to decide, you know, who was the director, who was the producer, but we all got given these um, different scripts and, you know, just like standard basic scripts. And what I really loved from it was that, and it was kind of the first time I kind of like realized this, that like every, every, we all went and made this film with the same script and every single person had a completely, completely different view on it. Like in, an interpretation of what the script was. And um, it was one of them things where, you know, because in your head you think, oh, this is how you do, this is how I would do it. But I didn't even think this is how I would do it. I think this, in my head, I was like, that's how you do this, you know, with these words. But, you know, some people went off and like made musicals and stuff. And like, some was like melodrama, some was comedy, you know, it was all like the delivery was different. And it was one of them first times I was like, wow, everyone's got a completely different vision of, of, of text and scripts. So it, it was one of them times where I was like, it doesn't, like anyone, like, everyone's got a voice and everyone's voice is different. Um, and everyone's voice is just as important as the others. And, and it doesn't matter if you want to do it this way or this way. It's, there's no right or wrong way to do it. So it was all about, you know, in, interpretation and delivery. And it, I don't know, it just made me really appreciate different people's ideas of, and visions of, of text and script really um because there, there was that one which i which i was really 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 cool and then there was another one um the, the script writing module and i remember we i think you were in group of three and you one person wrote a script and then you passed it to the, to the second person and they had to read the script and then from reading the script they ignored it and had to write what they were write the script again and the task was like, well, whatever you wrote from that script was, you know, the, 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 the memorable moments, they were the most important things what you remember from that script. And you couldn't go back and read it. So you, you, you read it once and then re, rewrote it. And then you do that a third time. And then hopefully by the third time, the most memorable things would push through and the, the other things would fall back. I, I just remember that being like such a good uh, process, you know, just a good like, I don't know, write, writing process. I just thought it was, it was, it was so good. I mean, they're the, they're the things I really remember what I, what, what took me into kind of directing a little bit more and, and knowing that. Um, and I suppose that sounds like it's the premise of, I guess, giving you the confidence in appreciating and understanding the building blocks of creative storytelling in all its different sort of shapes and forms. Big time, because because even now I still find the writing process the most daunting thing. And even when we were doing, you know, our dissertations and things, I, I like, 
I dreaded it so much, like trying to come, trying to come up with something or, you know, cause we, we did our final film. I, you know, I loved making the films, but I, I guess I didn't necessarily like writing, <laughs> writing about stuff, yeah. but it's weird now cause I write a lot and have to write to, to win jobs and everything. So it kind of, I do appreciate all the writing that came with it as well, you know. Cool. Next question, uh, a bit more of a generic one from the alumni perspective. Um, what's your favourite memory of York St John University? Oh, I have, I've got a lot, a lot of fond, fond memories. I think it was just making films with a good community and like-minded people. I remember this one time we... It was second second year was the most prominent year for me because I think first year you're kind of finding your feet and who your people are. You know, every like we're all, you know, you all go there as filmmakers and want to make films, but it's about like trying to find the like-minded people. You know, you've all got different, you know, everyone likes comedy, some people like comedy, some like less and like all that kind of stuff. And and second year, I really found like a a, a group of people I really loved to hang out with and make make films with. And I remember we had a in our documentary module, we had to find a subject and go up and film it. And we chose um, uh, live action role playing, uh, LARPing. Uh, so we had to go somewhere with these big, massive cameras. And I think there's like five of us in a crew. And we found this community of uh, live action role players and they let us into their worlds. But one of their rules they said to us was like, um, to get involved into filmers, you have to dress up as well. You know, so we had to dress up as these, like, you know, ghouls and, you know, different, different characters and had to um, fight, even fight and get involved with one another, like, the whole time. And then after, you know, we'd get involved and we'd break and then we'd like interview these different, these different people who, they, and they would say, do you want me in character or not in character? And then sometimes I'd be like, in character, please, that would be, that would be fantastic. <laughs> you know, and I, I just remember... You know, it was kind of my first experience of being like with a, a small group of people um, with a camera and just filming for the sake of making making the work. You know, there was there was no it was complete freedom. There was no, you know, brief really. It was like just make a film you want to make, and then you know we'd, we'd edit it together and so It was just the more collaborative space really. I, I loved it so much. Cool. Um, so you've touched uh, on a few of these elements, but what transferable skills do you think you developed from your time uh, studying at York St. John? I, I, I kind of at the end of that point, I'd say collaboration, like massively, like in working with a team of people. Like one thing I found going into a more professional kind of filmmaking landscape, like ego is such a big thing, like on every single level, like client level you know agency level even production level like every managing egos like crazy and it's like yeah it's especially in like music and fashion and things it's people think they're the dog's bollocks you know people think they're like amazing and like you know you've got to you've kind of got to manage that and but at the same time say you're doing a music video for someone and they're like one of the biggest artists something you know you've got to make sure that you're hearing them and making sure that you're translating and your idea as best you can to make them look as, as, as best that you can. So you can, I don't know. So you, so you harness that relationship and you can make more work with them. Um, it, it, yeah, it was, it's collaboration on all different aspects on um, working with, you know, a DOP and an editor and all this, like you've, you've kind of got to put your ego aside and, you know, surround yourself with very talented people, in some cases more talented than you, which I think is super, super important, especially for a director. I think it's like surround yourself with the right people and the best, better, or people who you just think, you know, because, I, you know, personally, I can edit, but I, 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 I wouldn't think I'm the best. So I'd be like, yeah. well, I want someone who's, who, can, who can add to this and make it even better than I think it can be, you know. I think that's really important, isn't it? Because I think from a sort of naive external perspective, people often think that it's one person that's responsible for the success of a film or a media artifact or what have we. But, you know, whether it's a big name director that's attached to the film, there's always a really integral team supporting, endorsing and, and often 
dictating the sort of look and feel and atmosphere of of those works yeah it? big time i think that the most thing like i i, I kind of learn constantly is just like translating your idea and being able to communicate it properly i think if you have a clear idea and understanding of what you want you can you can then choose your team and then if you tell each department what you want and how you see it then they'll bring their own thing to it and it'll just it'll end up just being the exactly how you kind of see it and even better because of all these amazing people who you, you've surrounded yourself with okay so one last question before i move on to some career-based questions um what do you wish you could say to your younger self when at university? Um, I would say um, make more films. <laughs> I think what I really didn't take advantage of was like the, the access, the kind of access to um, equipment and, and, and especially you guys as well. I feel like I could have asked for more advice uh, booked the equipment out more because you guys constantly encouraged us to to just go out and make films you know it was there the equipment's there all we needed is, is, is like you know at the time was signing these paper papers and saying a you know purpose for what you wanted to want it for and you go out and make it and i don't you know i, I just don't think i i utilized that enough even if it was just like a little shitty idea you thought in your head I you know that you'd shoot in in your in your flat something like i think trying to make as much as you can so you can fail and then you can see what works or say you've got a shot in mind you're like oh this shot is so sick i want to try this shot just well just try it like why, why don't you just get some equipment and get some people around you because what at the time what else are you doing you, you, you you've got these modules you've got certain things you've got to make but there's i mean i remember having so much little time in between like all the time and, and especially being in a place like york which i think is so visually beautiful and surrounding it is so visually beautiful like the landscape's great you've got so many places to shoot like it's 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 so vast it's just like the type of ideas and things you can make i just think to try and make as much stuff as you can yeah i, I just, think it's one of those things with the university isn't it it's your kind of safe zone to fail and really to kind of embrace that notion of kind of experimentation and testing, do it whilst you're at university, because when you're in the real working world, you won't really have that much time to kind exactly. of uh, mess things up and, and exactly. produce you know, sort of yeah, negative you know, I, I tried this shot before, it was great, you know, like, it's, it, it's, yeah, like you say, it's a safe place to fail, like, it's, it's, you just got to test and, and find kind of build up your artistic ammunition so to say big time yeah big time although i'm sure the trade-off was that you were having some wonderful life experience as I, well i was you know that, that's the thing it's it's all it's always you know put in hindsight oh you know i wish i could have done that but you know i still had a really good good time there as well i just you know i think it's the time when you, you're just not you're not saying to yourself you know I, I just wasn't taking it very seriously i don't think i was enjoying it and the freedom of it but i just wasn't i just you know now it's like i got i gotta earn some money <laughs> <laughs> yeah. okay so i guess that brings us nicely on some uh, questions uh, specifically about career um can you tell us more about your first experience directing a video for a client oh yeah um uh, i presume would that have been the wolf alice video yeah that, that was like the first time someone was like here's some money go and make something um and it was really really daunting um yeah i yeah you know i i just didn't know what to do with it um but i made sure i mean i planned it like meticulously i was like i drew all the storyboards and would then send them to to the band constantly and just make sure i was just trying to make sure that we were all on the same wavelength and that we were all making the same film, like the same video. Because my biggest dread is getting on set and, you know, you set up for a shot, which can take a long time. And then someone comes up and goes, wait, what, what, what's this? What are we doing? Like, it's just my biggest dread. And I think I was just like, I'm going to plan, plan this so much. That like and communicate it to the band as much as I can to make sure that we're not going to go on set and someone's going to go, what are we making? 
because that was my biggest worry. Like I even, you know, even sending them, I was constantly sending them like locations as well, like what we were scouting. It was like, oh, is this all right? Is this, you know, I was just constantly doing that. And that kind of, that kind of work ethic I was doing there is it completely then went on to the, like the first TV commercial I was doing. Or like first commercial, you know, the kind of first commercial I did was like some weird, it was like some weird Microsoft thing. But, it, you know, it was an opportunity to to kind of use the skills I'd, I'd done there and, again, plan and show the agency every single aspect of what I want to do. So so then if anyone asks you any questions on set, you you just have the answer. You just be like, well, that, we're doing this because of this. And if they say, oh, well, what are, you know, I mean, you, there's, there's elements where you've got to think on your feet, but it was definitely, um, yeah, it was definitely an interesting experience from both music video and commercial but it's just planning i think because you plan everything you you, you kind of you, you you you're all right and like you touched on there i guess it's really important from that sort of collaborative um point of view and instilling confidence in uh, the crew and people that you're working with that you are able to answer any questions that come towards you which is where a lot of the kind of uh preparation development is integral to the actual shooting of of the video itself isn't it big time big time and it's also like like especially more on a commercial level it's like respecting the brief because they you know the agency and the client they come up with you know they send you a paragraph and like this is what we want to do so it's you respecting them and respecting that they've probably gone through so many channels to get this commercial signed off before it gets to you so you've got to really respect that and, and and make sure that you're not taking it and going well i'm just going to do whatever i want to do you know it's 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 again it's it's going back to that collaborative thing so i mean you touched on um how some of the experiences of directing that wolf alice video kind of affected um work that that came after that did probably kind of an interesting dynamic because as you alluded to you'd already established a rapport with I guess your first clients of Wolf Alice um so do you think that made it a little bit easier in terms of directing that music video learning from that experience and being able to apply that to perhaps what you might consider I guess more of a, a sort of formal client brief on the, yeah. on the next um venture Big time. I remember this one time, um, well, it was on the Wolf Alice video, you know, because it was my first, you know, I felt there was a lot of pressure. I felt pressure. I was like, shit, I've got to, you know, it was first time working with a production company and stuff. Um, but I remember um, we were running out of time towards the end and the, the first assistant director was like, you know, tap, tapping the watch and saying we need, we need to finish and everything like that. And I still had quite a lot of shots to do and I was getting a bit flustered. And I was kind of like, you know, I had all these kind of planned movements and shots and we ended up like, I was like, oh, let's just get the camera and do handheld and do this. And I remember we had this really ex um, experienced gaffer there doing the lighting and he just like leant over to me and was like, we're all here. We're never going to be here again. Just calm down. We'll get what you need. Just, just, just do that. Just like if you concentrate and think we'll, we'll get what you need, you'll get what you need. And I just remember thinking, okay, well, you know, I'm not using that advice and going, just going like, okay, well, I just need to be calm and just be like, well, and then on, on every set, even if we're running behind, I'm like, the thing is, once you get, when, when there's a level and there's so much, you know, budget can be really big and there's all these people here, it's like, none of them are ever going to be here again doing this. So I'm just like, let's just, just, just take, take a minute and just like, let's just shoot what we need to shoot because you know all this money i always think there's like all this money here like all this crew like standing around it's like let's not waste it kind of thing um yeah i think that's what i kind of took from that video to go into like a more commercial client and on the back of that i suppose how did you kind of how have you developed your sort of directing techniques and aesthetic over the years um I mean, do you feel you've kind of found your directing style if, yeah. there's, if there's such a thing or are you still kind of evolving, learning and developing with with every new thing that you work on? Yeah, I, I, yeah, I, I, I think I'm still kind of trying to find it in a way. I think I'm only just now really starting to 
find my feet with it, which is really strange because I feel like I've you know done made quite a lot of videos and stuff and, and ads. Um, but um, yeah, I feel like I'm kind of still playing around with it. I'm I'm always drawn. Like, I feel like I, when I look through it, I'm, I'm drawn to like you know authenticity and honesty and but the like with this kind of like dreamy dreamlike feel really um but yeah I think I think you're kind of right I, I, I mean when I, I I feel like you give me anything and I feel like I could make something from it in in, in my style and I think looking at it internally it's harder for me to say I think maybe if one of my friends or something saw they'd be like oh yeah you know you, it's, you've got a consistent thing going through and maybe things I I guess wouldn't necessarily um see but I, I guess I never went into never went into it thinking this is this is my style I think that was the main thing I didn't I didn't um put um barriers up to be like this is how I'm going to do it and this is the only way I'm going to do it I, I took every piece of music that got sent to me in every um commercial brief and was like well what is the best way what, what am I thinking and what is the best way to develop this um because with music videos you literally just get sent the track and if they if the artist wants to be in the video or not and it's like okay <laughs> maybe a reference what they like but that's about it so then you kind of you just constantly listen to the music and i'm just writing down whatever's coming to my mind rather than thinking um well how does this play into my style i guess but then but then i think that's just a you know that's that's just unique to, to to me and anyone else who would listen to it. You'd listen to a track and you'd see different images than I would see. And that's what's so great, you know. Which I guess comes back to what you were talking about earlier in that so those early experiences of kind of recognising that everybody has a different interpretation and take on things. And that's yeah. fine. Isn't yeah, it? exactly. Yeah, yeah. And, and neither is wrong or neither is right. It's just, it's just your take. Um. What tips would you give to someone who wants to build their network of people in the film industry? Yeah, it's a tough one, because, you know, I feel like, I feel, I just feel like I was really fortunate that, that my mum was extremely enthusiastic, you know, when she was uh, making someone some flowers and kind of got my foot in the, in the door that way. Um, and also, you know, me just, yeah, I feel like I was re really lucky to kind of get in there. But I think... The main thing I think now is trying to find it's trying to find your people and how you do that is, is going to things like film festivals. You know, I know there's a great one in York, Aesthetica. I know that's a great film festival. So if people go to there and, and meet all these people and chat and, you know, socialize, I think that's a really good way to kind of to, to definitely network. Um, I'm trying to think of a thing. I think maybe like persistence i feel like with me it's just it's just constantly being like persistent <laughs> even 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 now I'm, i i like i cold email people you know i would there's this uh, there's this thing i do where you know I, I follow on instagram the production companies i like and the directors i like and what i you know you see a job that's come up and you go fuck it, that's a really that's a really good job and you're now everyone's tagged in everything and everyone's names down. So if I like a job, I'll see who the agency is. <laughs> I'll see who the creatives are and I'll find their emails and emails, <laughs> yeah. you know, even, even using LinkedIn. Like I did, I've only just really started using it. I think it's because I just thought it was just not for filmmaking, but it's for co like commercials. It's like, yeah, it's filmmaking, but it's like, you know, it's, it's a business type thing. And I was just like, I've never really had a business mind about these things, but recently I've really, you know, getting a spreadsheet together and writing down names of everyone. And, you know, but, but I think starting out, it's trying to go to as many things as you can. Yeah. Like as many film festivals, just being enthusiastic yeah. about it. Um, it's a tough question. It's hard. Like, I guess, I guess in some respects, like the, that encounter of you, mums in the in the flower shop sometimes things like that fall into your lap um yeah. the other side of that as you've just alluded to is it's kind of chasing tails isn't it a bit of it persistence is. putting yourself out there and trying to maintain that um positive level of kind of personality and enthusiasm in the way that you represent yeah. yourself so that you kind of linger in the memory of people that might be able to afford you opportunities further down the line 
big time. I think it's just like putting the energy out there. There's, you know, because throughout your, you know, as you're in, you know, the commercial music videos or whatever, like filmmaking landscape, you'll find a lot of bitter people. <laughs> There's a lot of bitterness that goes on, you know, and I think people can feel that. And I, I think if you're just, if you try and be positive with it and not, you know, like it's the worst when someone goes, you know, you show someone something and they go, well, I could do that. But it's like, well, probably, mate, but you didn't. <laughs> like, that, that's the thing. Like, we could all do it, but, like, I have a massive respect for people who go out and do it. Like, I, I think it's great, and I think it's infectious. You know, if, if one of my, you know, I've got a lot of friends who are directors here, and when I see them make something, you know, there, there is this point in me, I'm like, oh, God, wish, wish I'd done that. You know, but then what it does to me, it's like, okay, well, that little little project I've gotten written down on, on my notebook, like, well, what am I doing with that? I've got to, I've got to try and get something made. You know. So um, I think you've kind of touched on the notion of how you became involved in directing commercials, um, in that notion of it kind of being a sort of evolution from your own personal endeavours and connections with partisan and what have we. Um, what would you say the key tasks of a commercial or music video director are? I think it's almost kind of what I was saying with like communication and communicating your idea, respecting the brief. Um, but I think it's got a lot to do with like trying to be a people person. And I, and I, and I know that's really tough. For, you know, a lot of people could have an amazing vision, but uh, maybe not communicate it or not be able to or feel anxious, you know. But then again, I think it's... Um, Again, what I was saying is, is surrounding yourself with these people or maybe louder people who, who can translate it for you. Say, I don't know, a first AD or a producer. Definitely having a good a good producer by your side is, is really great. Um, but I think it's definitely, yeah, the key task is bringing people together. I don't know. I think that's the main thing. I, I, that's just my personal thing. I just think it's, like if I can't do that and translate what I want to do, I think I think you're bound. You, you're going to fail if you if you haven't got the crew on your side. And just on the back of that, do you have any kind of should we say persistent collaborators that you'll try and bring on to like every project that you yeah. work on? Yeah, like the main one um, is the cinematographer, is the DOP. Um, I constantly try and. <laughs> get them to be part of everything I've, I've done you know and y y y there's obviously other people but I have this this, this is one DOP who's amazing it's called Adric Watson and um I remember a first music video I did with him was for an artist called Callum Scott and we I had like there was these there's this there's this, this scene where um where I'd planned to do about I don't know lo like loads of different shots and he 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 just looked at me and was like, we could probably just do this in two. And I was just like, what? And he was like, yeah, just move to here, do that. And do you know when you're just kind of like, oh yeah, like, because he basically asked me, what are you trying to, what are you trying to say with the scene or something? And I, you know, came up with, yeah, I was like, I'm trying to say this or whatever. And he was like, well, we can just do it like this. And that kind of, I mean, trust me, trusting him and him trusting me, it was, I mean, it was a big eye opener for me. And I was just like, wow, I've never, worked with a uh, someone who kind of put it so put something so simply that made the scene so much better and then um yeah i, I i've like every single project worked for him he, he shot my um my personal project as well my brother because he's a friend as well that you know every, he's a friend more than anything even though we worked together first before we were friends we hang out all the time and I'm sure on the flip side of that, with no names mentioned, you've probably encountered people that you've worked with that maybe you don't have um, such a positive kind of rapport. Well, yeah, yeah, yeah. Not as many as, as like the positive ones, but there is some that I've worked, worked with before and I was just like, nah, you know, just, but you know what it was? It was, it was mainly working with older producers when I was starting out, you know, and I was, I think when I was first directing things with money you know I was like 26 and the producers was probably like I don't know like 20 no 20 in the 40s or something very experienced you know they're very they're very experienced producers and I felt sometimes I was taught to talk down to 
um, which is a real shame because you should never be on experience or anything. It should be trying to help each other out. But I just really remember just being like, well, I I don't want, I don't want that. I just want people who want to raise me up and I can raise them up. And, you know, that's the best way to make something good. I guess invariably in collaborative industries, there's, there's that kind of realm of testing and discovering um, who you work well with and who, who not so well. Yeah. Um, What's your favorite aspect of the job? Um, I just, <laughs> it keeps going back to like people, doesn't it? But like, you know, being on set, I love being on set, even though it can be really stressful. I love when, you know, things can are trying to be on time and then they're on time. And then my biggest buzz is either the little red dot getting record, like we're recording something, like, thank God for this. Although I can hear the, the the film going through the camera, or, you know, it's just it's going like right. I'm I'm we're shooting something now that's been, so, you know, I've written down on a little scrap of paper, and now we're we're shooting it. I think it's the it's that buzz, the absolute buzz, which I like, actually come to life. I love it, yeah, and just like looking around and going like all these people are here to to make something. I just think. I just think it's so, it's so I, it, from the first time I did something from from the last job I did, I don't think I've it, there's been any feeling of uh, a difference really. Like, I still feel you know that slight nervousness from from when I was shooting that Wolf Alice video to doing a, com- a commercial now, um, but I still feel really privileged and appreciate all these people working. Like, I, like it's it's a it's a real buzz. Um, so there's, there's that, which I love, but then I love the editing. I love, love, love the editing process. I think it's an absolute, yeah, I think it's the best. But it's, again, it's, it's, it's working with people. It's being collaborative and working with people. I'm not someone who, who can sit in a room on my own all day, really. Well, I can. <laughs> Sometimes. <laughs> I'm watching a film or something, but I, I just like being yeah, surrounded by people and, and making things. Yeah. Um. I mean, you've kind of touched on these. What would you sort of say is a typical work day for yourself? Nice. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Definitely varies. Um, I'd say um, typical work day. Um, when I'm not on a job, <laughs> it's finding work. <laughs> that persistence element and looking down my list and seeing people like seeing work and trying to trying to chase tail basically um but then once i get the work it's um it's pitching the pitching process which is super it can be really daunting and really tiresome um i literally just lost a job at the moment from doing like a 30 page massive treatment and agency calls and all this and enthusiasm it's exhausting you know it's because I have to, they send me their brief and then I have to translate their paragraph or their script of what they want to do. And I have to say, you know, my approach, how I'm going to approach it. I have to say how I'm going to cast it, the styling, the edit, the cinematography, um, like every single aspect. And I have to write it down. I have to write all these things down. It's different to every single job. And then you write all this down. And then what you've got to do, either you do it by yourself, you you find all images that represent how you're going to make something. You put that all together in a big document, try and make it look as great as you can. And then you sit on a screen like this most of the time and you pitch it and you go like, literally share your screen and you pitch it. And it's the most daunting thing, but even the level of the sense of achievement that you've, you've, you know, you've, you've had that creative outlet and you've pitched it, you know, even, even it, it absolutely kills me when I, when I lose, when I lose a job, cause you put so much into it. And usually you're pitching against like three other directors. Um, it, um, you know, it's, 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 it's tough, but then you've just got to go, well, at least, you know, I've, I've written that I've got some good ideas there. It's not going to waste and you got to move on to to the to the next thing um so i guess yeah there's that so there's when i've not got a job when i'm pitching on a job and then when i get a job it's just pre-production which you know which you guys 
which I got, you know, I learned a lot from York St. John. It's like knowing it's planning, plan, 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 and tell storyboard everything, find your locations or find your, the people you want to film or casting and, you know, all these kind of things to, to, so then when you get on the shooting day, you've, um, you know, everything, you know, the answers <laughs> to everything. And that's the main thing. Um, but, you know, there's some di some days where I'm chilling. I go to a museum. And I, I go to the cinema a lot on my own on Monday mornings because it's half price. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. um, so we've covered quite a lot of the questions there, but I would sort of to, to kind of summarize or, or lead towards a summary. I'm conscious of, of time. What advice would you give to someone who wants to start a career in directing? Um, yeah. I'd, I'd say you've really got to want it. I think it's a, it's you know I, I'm in a I'm in a WhatsApp group, right, with t over two hundred freelance directors in London. It's a lot of people, a lot of com you know, it's a lot of competition. But at the same time, we're we're in this group because we're all trying to help each other. Um, so I think. It's, as I was saying before, it's about persistence. And, you know, if you have drive, you'll always, you, you know, you will prevail. Um, but I think the biggest thing I learned was really trying to understand like every, not just directing, but every single aspect of the filmmaking process. And I think when I was at York St. John, you know, we, we, we got our hand in everything. And I think, like, I remember one, one, you know, it's all there for us, for any, for, for, for as much as we want. You know, I remember um, I went and um, went on a skate trip in summer while I was at university and I filmed all this footage. And, you know, I, I had a laptop at home and I had like a cracked version of Final Cut 7. But I was like, nah, I've got to learn how to use the Avid on, on, uh, on the, at the uni. So I just like that summer... Um, because we have access, I was just, I just edited this film on Avid at, at, at York St. John at uni, just because I was like, I need to understand this. I need to understand how to do it. Um, because then when you end up, you know, like when I was be becoming a director and you're sat next to someone who's an editor and they go, oh, you know, I don't think we can do this. And you kind of go, oh, well, I, I, I think we can do that. And I, this is a way I think we can do it. And I think it's understanding if each and every different different role. So if, any, if anyone tries to trump you anything or anyone says you can't do it, and if you know you can because you understand their role, then, you know, I, I think it's going to make you a better director. Mm. Um, yeah. Um, yeah, and I guess... Try and find stories that inspire you, I guess. I don't know. That's kind of like the end thing. Yeah. Just do what do what drives you. I think what kind of led me to do a personal project was, you know, my brother left, about my brother, he left the army five years ago or something. But it just never occurred to me that I had a story right in front of me, you know, and he just never, I just literally put a microphone and started asking him questions. You know, it was, it was as simple as that. And I just think it's like sometimes the stories can be like right in front of your face and you just don't even realize them. So I just think, yeah, talk to everyone, you know, try and find these stories. Yeah, I was going to sort of touch on that as we kind of draw to a conclusion. What Was it a different kind of dynamic um, tackling a, a story that invariably, I'm guessing, was much more personal than any of the other things that you've worked on before? Yeah, it was, it, it was, it was it really came from a phone call from my mom and she was like, you know, I don't think there's, I think there's something wrong with your, your brother. He doesn't seem right. He is being different, you know, and he's very like from being in the army and this, the general, like, you know, male stereotype, like, oh, everything's fine, man. Don't worry about it. Uh, you know, all that kind of thing. And I basically just like, started talking to him and asking him questions and he slowly started opening up and then I asked him if I could just put a, a like a, a radio mic on him and, you know he was like yeah we're, we're, you know he, he's he, he's clueless to it he's whatever it just, it's not going to affect him it's like yeah whatever put it on and then we actually did, we I actually did the interview sat in, sat in a car 
that's like sat next to him in a car. So it wasn't face to face. It was really impersonal. And he just started, you know, slowly but surely just started getting information out of him. I don't know which, which it was something we, we kind of got taught at York St. John, you know, just like if you have the awkward moments, hold it, hold those awkward moments. And because they, the person might not think that they finished or answered the question. So they'll just carry on talking and you just never know what you're going to get out of them. And he just really, really opened up. And then from there, I cut down the interview and I was just like, shit, I feel like I've got, I've got something here. And then I just like, um, saved up rolls of film from different shoots and saved up a bit of money. And I was just like, right, I need, I need to make this. Um, but I, I got everything signed off from my brother first that he was like the client and, you know, I would send him things and, you know, if he said he felt uncomfortable or anything, I just wouldn't, wouldn't put it out there, but he was really open and supportive. And in the end, he, he was like, how the hell have you met that from this? You know, he couldn't, he didn't, really, he didn't really know what I was trying to say. I just said, I just think he should be open about his, 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 his experiences that because it could help other veterans, basically. That's yeah. good. And is he, is he happy with the outcome? He's, he's very happy. Yeah, he's very, he's very, very happy. Yeah, he's, he goes on about it quite a lot. You know, and, and, and the biggest thing about it is it's kind of brought us back you know, back together and, and made our relationship really strong um, because we're very, very different people. And I think it was, it was a really good way to merge what he did um, to what I do and realise that we can have a connection even though we're worlds apart from what we do. Yeah. That's a really interesting way of looking at it. Yeah. Um, okay, so I'm, I'm conscious of time and that we're probably going to need to draw things to an end, but... On the back of that, and I guess as a fitting conclusion, um, what aspirations do you have going forward? Any yeah. sort of um, areas or sort of territory that you've not explored yet that you would like to kind of um, pursue? Yeah, big time. Basically, I remember when I was at uni and we did our final year film and I was always drawn to you know, making drama and, and, and conversations and dialogue. And, um, you know, weirdly, I haven't done, I haven't shot even two people sat chatting since uni. I haven't done that. You know, I, I make things that are very music led and very, or, or documentary that or documentary that feels again stylized in the way of a music video and a way of a fashion film. And I think I, I just miss dialogue and talking because, because that's what I was doing first. And weirdly, throughout this, you know, wanting to be just to make films and then falling into music videos and commercials and stuff, I kind of want to come back and, like, I just basically need... Because like, I want to I get... I, I like TV dramas, you know. I like series and I like, um, you know, I, I love film. So it's one of them things where I'm like, that is my... That has kind of always been my goal. And I think I've just had this, you know, I've kind of forgotten that a little bit. And I just want to, I just want to, yeah, make, I, I, I want to do, do TV and film, you know, I, I, I like that sort of thing. But at the same time, like, I love, um, I love documentaries and I love um, trying to think of how we can tell a story in a different way. And not just, like, how we did my brother, brother's film wasn't a typical, like, you know, um, voyeuristic documentary. Well, I planned everything. <laughs> you know, I went and wrecked everything. And I knew, I, I treated it like I'd treat a normal shoot. Like I would do a music video and a commercial. I didn't treat it like I was just following him around or whatever. You know, it's different types of documentaries, but I planned it all. And I kind of, that, that's what I want to then put into a more, I guess, serious drama. But I've got, you know, I've, the thing, the thing, the thing is with me, I have a lot of ideas and I throw a lot of, you know, I, but it takes, a, it does take me a lot to follow through and make a personal project. And I think it's, it's been the biggest learning curve making something for myself because it's been, it, it's literally been since university that I've made something for me. Mm. Like it's, it's, it's weird. It, and it felt so gratifying and it felt so 
it just felt great. It was like, right, like this, this is this is what I want to be doing now. And, I, and I've got to make sure that I have one personal project at, at, at least a year, at least, like, which can which can you know be hard mm. when you're trying to do, you know, trying to make a living. It's tough, but yeah. I oh, know it's great. I mean, I, I wish all the success in the world for um, your current documentary as it's doing its rounds uh, at the festivals and what have we. And um, it's been great to talk to you. Oh, uh, it's some really it. insightful kind of information on your career and your journey thus far. Um, and I wish you well for the future. Oh, man, it's been great. Thank you very much. It's been it's been an absolute pleasure. Okay, grand. And with that, I guess we'll bring this uh, webinar to a close. Yes, nice one. Thank you very much. No worries.